22 books, the latest of which is Hail, Hail, Euphoria, presenting the Marx Brothers in Duck Soup, the greatest war movie ever made. Mr. Roy Blunt, Jr. Roy, welcome to Key West. Good to be here, Kerry. Good to have you. Good to have you back in town. You've been here before for the literary seminar, and it's yeah. always a, a pleasure to have you folks in town. Roy, uh, this book is, is, is a great, great read, and, and I, I kind of wanted you to maybe explain the title to folks. Uh, it's, a, it's a long title. And maybe uh, maybe you could explain to them uh, and get them in the mood of mood of duck soup. Hail hail euphoria! I'm trying to remember what the name is. <laughs> it's, today, it's, today, long, it's long. It's, it's long. Hail hail euphoria! <laughs> presenting the Marx Brothers in Duck Soup, the greatest war movie ever made. Um, it um, the reason we call it the greatest war movie ever made is that Mili Military History Magazine called it the 24th greatest war movie ever made, and as you can see, we don't have room <laughs> for the 24th, so we call it the greatest war movie ever made. Why not? And Duck Soup is the title of the movie. It was made in 1933 at the depths of the Depression, and it is just a completely crazy movie, not about, uh, you know, it has no justification at all, except just sort of hilarity. Right. And well, the Marx Brothers are in it, that's why that, and hail, hail, you the big song in it is Hail, Hail, Fredonia, Land of the Brave <laughs> and Free. It's, it, uh, it's, it, there's no doubt it's a great movie, but, but Roy, you've written about so many different topics. How does it come to you that you're going to write a book about duck soup? Well, every book is different, but in this case, um, a, an editor at uh, HarperCollins uh, started, was starting a series of books of one writer writing about one thing that the writer wanted to write about. And he said, would you like to write a short book about something? And I always wanted to write a book about a movie, and I've always been interested in the Leo McCary, the director of this movie. Right. never gotten enough credit for having written uh, lots of different kinds of funny movies, comedy movies, not all comedy movies. Anyway, that, that's, that's the great thing about this book. I mean, it's a great romp through the movie, but there's a lot of historical information, too, in here. I mean, it must have taken a, quite a while to research all that. Well, it took a while, yeah, but it was fun, you know, watching old movies. And, um, uh, and then I, when I was writing it, I had my own big monitor on my desktop computer, and I could put the watch the movie up in one corner and, and write on the rest of the screen and uh, start it and stop it and back it up that's, and that's, uh, that's examine it in detail. That's while pretty, pretty fancy, yeah. Well, you explore all the Marxes in great detail, and, and I have to give you some credit. I, I, don't, I don't know this to be true for a fact, but I, I gotta think you're the only person that's ever written a book about the Marx Brothers and found a way to work Karl Marx into the whole thing. Yeah, book. well, but, you know. But it, there Karl is, about page 73, and I'm like, oh, well, he, now I had to, make, had to read closely to make sure he wasn't one of the brothers, that's actually. That's right. Well, he had more, uh, he was actually funnier, I found out, <laughs> than he had as a reputation for. Well, you, I mean, did you come away having, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the way way to say it is a favorite, but I mean having having a lot of having more respect or thinking one of the brothers is maybe the most influential or well the nicest one certainly the one that everybody liked and the happiest one was Harpo. Uh, he's he um, wound up uh, he never got married for a long time, but then he, when he did get married, he stayed married, had a happy marriage, and adopted four children and uh, had, and played with the children all the time, and uh, everybody loved. Harpo, who on screen is the craziest of them, which is saying a great deal, but uh, in real life, even though he was sort of crazy, uh, he was also lovable and uh, turned out to know how to live. Yeah, well it's funny how they all evolved. I guess, you know, uh, Harpo, I guess one time they didn't have any lines for him, so he just decided he wasn't going to talk anymore. Yeah, well, he, he, so he decided he would ad-lib, and the ad-libs didn't go over. Right, so he right. Said, well, I'm not say anything for the rest of his career. He, that was in vaudeville, that he, uh, tried to ad lib, but he never spoke again in the act, and uh, right. so people think he can't, couldn't speak, but he, in real life, he could, and he, he had a sort of George, uh, Georgia, he had a sort of New York accent from growing up on the streets of New York. And, and Groucho, I guess, one, you know, he used to actually wear a mustache, but then, uh, I guess, didn't have it one time and put on grease paint and said, well, why, why fool with the other? Yeah, right, he just, he was late to the uh, vaudeville performance and just smeared on some grease paint, and it went well, and uh, until he went on TV, he uh, didn't, finally on TV, you know, it wasn't high right. depth, but <laughs> right. it was, uh, right. I right. guess, a smear of grease paint doesn't really work on TV, so he grew his own. All right. Okay. And, and one, th one thing, and this is very important, I mean, you point out early in the book that it, it is, in fact, Chico versus Chico. That's right. It, yeah, they call him Chico because he chased chicks. <laughs> and he did chase them to a fault. He, Suc successfully, uh, too. <laughs> he caught them. Right? He caught a number of them, apparently, and uh, which uh, hurt his wife's feelings a great deal and <laughs> ruined his marriage eventually. She was a long-suffering person. But everybody loved Chico, but he just behaved. He was a 
degenerate gambler at the age of 11, <laughs> and from then on, and he loved to lose money. He loved to lose bets. He would bet on anything. And they made a movie called, uh, which one was it? It was uh, Horse Feathers, where there was a football game in the movie, and he would bet with the crew on who was going to win the football game, even though it was scripted. Who was going to win. He just, had, had he just couldn't help himself. Yeah, right. Maybe the next take. They win. <laughs> well, the interesting thing you wrote about Chico is, I guess he he kind of figured out early on that there was just so much personality going on with Harpo, with Harpo and Groucho that he was just going to have to back away. I think you said in the book that there was just not room for all three of them in that, all, at that level. So. All three of them to be. Prima donnas. Yeah. He, her, his wife tried to talk him into yeah. being more assertive and uh, being because Groucho and Harpo tended to be regarded as the stars, even though Chico was the o oldest brother and the dominant brother, the alpha brother in the family. Mm. And he, whenever they got in trouble, Chico was always in trouble. But whenever the whole group got in trouble, Chico would pull something off and wangle a contract <laughs> or, or win a big gin game or something and get them back in action. So and Chico I was a was a strong personality, but he. He figured let let the other guys be strong in the movie. I think that kind of happened to Larry in the Three Stooges. You know, I always felt kind of <laughs> bad for Larry because you know here's your big old uh, yeah. uh, Curly, Curly and, and your and your Mo, your Mo and, and yeah, right. you know and Mo would poke Curly in there. I need to poke Larry just for standing there. I know, so, that's right. But I guess in the end, you all make the same money, so it doesn't make any difference. But yeah. but uh, it's quite a wrong. And the other thing I can't believe is that they actually did this live on stage back in Vaudeville. They were yeah. doing, they were doing like coconuts, like the whole movies right. on stage. Yeah, they. Um, yeah, on the Broadway stage they did um, uh, most, of, not this movie, not Duck Soup, right, but right. Coconuts and a couple of others they worked out on stage and so by the time they got got it filmed and they were, they tended to think, at least in the early days, in terms of the stage too, they would, they couldn't stay on camera. They, uh, they, they were moving around they, too much. Yeah, they were used to just going wherever they wanted to within the, uh, the set, but then, so there was a point, at one point they had one cameraman for each brother and just so they'd get a shot of each of them somehow or another, and it turned out that all three cameras got focused on Harpo. <laughs> uh, just had, just had to do the whole thing. Over. It was like herding cats. You can't yeah. keep up. Yeah. Well, I, I can't. I can't believe somebody didn't get hurt every night with these guys running around stage like that. But um, well, it's a great book. I want to. I wanted to talk about one other uh, series of books that you did with the photographer Valerie Schaff. Yeah. Uh, these are great, and and. Uh, Valerie takes pictures of the, these great animals, whether it's puppies, cats, dogs, pigs, and Roy uh, sort of is, is, the, is the animal whisperer and kind of interprets what their expressions uh, seem to imply, but this had to be a lot of fun.